Hello my friends and welcome to Mastering Data Structures and Algorithms course from Master Coding Channel. In this video, we are going to start a new course about DSA, Data Structures and Algorithms course, and we will learn about how to crack the coding interview questions and become a successful employee and how to make a get a job and how to succeed in your university exams in data structures and algorithms also so have you ever wondered how why these data structures and algorithms are so important why should you use them why should you learn them where I could get all of these data structures and how to get the questions, uh, exams, exercises, and so on. You came to the right place. Here on our channel, on Master Coding channel, we are going to learn from zero to hero to crack the coding interview with a very solid course and exercises that we will practice every day. So you might have told about how are these data structures and algorithms become so important in programming okay so let me tell you that writing a code is a kind of art and it solo solely depends on what on that you how to turn your code into a beautiful and well understood one and most importantly everyone can write the code easily if they know some basics but what you have to know is writing optimized code this is the goal of this course how to optimize how to write an optimized code that will run correct that will be optimized in speed and will be executed in optimized way using the convenient data structures and the convenient logical thinking let's learn about the variables first the important thing that we need to understand is that the equation has names x and y which holds the values the data so consider this equation x squared plus 2y minus 2 equal to 1 that means the names is x and y are placeholders for representing the data similarly in computer science programming we need some thing for holding the data and variables is the way to do that these are the way the, the variables in programming how these are the placeholders or variable holders and uh, data holders in programming the data types as we learned in the in the java course or android course or kotlin course that they are presented on our master coding channel and the link in the description below also these are the data types they every language has data types but the main concept and the main primitive things that we learn about and they are common between all languages are the integers the decimals and the the decimals and real numbers and positives and negatives now x could be 10 20 30 and so on it would be 0 0.43 or 0 0.1 and so on also y can be 53 uh, decimal 99 0 0.211 0 0.1 and so on it may be an integer in form of a complete number it would be a float like 0 0.43 or 6.3 and it would be maybe 0 and 1 these are the primitive data that they are commonly used between the different coding languages now the second things that and the second data types you they you may encounter and that you have learned about is the object oriented programming and how to create the objects 
So the, the second data type is user defined and which are the objects. So till now we have data types, either a primitive data, integer, float, boolean, character, and so on, and the user defined, which are the objects. What is an algorithm? I am making a short introduction and we are going to go through a step by step in the next uh, course and next lessons. So don't worry, we are going to clarify everything. In computer programming terms, an algorithm is a set of well defined instructions to solve a particular problem. It takes a set of input and produces a desired output. For example, an algorithm to add two numbers. First of all, we, we took the first number. I ask a user or anyone to add, uh, to tell me a number, the first number that he need to add. The second number he need me to add. We add the numbers using the plus operator and then we display the result in the sum variable. So 4 plus 70 is equal to 74. The same as in the algorithm state in coding. If I ask you to find the largest number among three numbers, what you need to make? First of all, you'll start the program, declare the variables A, B, and C, or number one, number two, and number three, and read the variables A, B and C or number one, number two, and number three. So I ask any person to enter three numbers. These are the three numbers. Now, if I ask you to find the largest, how you start comparing the, the logic and the algorithm that I think about it is comparing with A and C together, which is bigger. If A greater than C, or first of all, I compare A with B, number one and number two. If A greater than C, then display A is the largest number. This is the case of our exercise. An example, one for one is greater than 70. So this is the condition A greater than B. So I here, here I have two big states, if A greater than B or B greater than A. This is if and this is else. So A greater than B, yes, one for 141 is greater than 70. So I will not execute and I will not see this code. I will execute only A greater than B and I will see A greater than B. Yes. So I put it into a new number one for one. And now I compare A with C. So if A greater than C, now I compare one for one with 12, then display A is the largest number. So in this way, I get the 141 is the greatest number among the three numbers. This is the logic. I compare the first two. The biggest between them, I compare it with the third number. And I will get it the I will get the largest number. Consider an algorithm number three. If I asked you to refine the quadratic equation, the roots of the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, you will make a new variable a, b, and c. You will put a as 1, b as 2, and c as 1. If I, find, uh, I told you to find the x squared plus 2, uh, 2x plus c. The first thing I need to make, this is the, the user enter, the, this is the general formula. This is 
the entered data between the user. So A is entered like X square because A one X square plus two X plus one is equal to zero. I am solving this equation. The first thing I need to make in this to find the root of the quadratic equation is to find the determinant, which is B, B squared minus 4AC. So I multiply B by itself and I d uh, subtract 4 times A times C. After that, I will create, which is the determinant is equal to zero. So the determinant is calculated and equal to zero. Here I have two states the first thing is the root which is r or the determinant is greater than or equal to zero and this is the way if d less than zero in our case in our example if i put x square if i am finding here x square plus 2x plus 1 equal to zero then I am finding here the determinant which is the zero and I will pass through this way. R1 would be minus B plus radical B square minus 4AC over 2A and root 2 would be minus B minus radical B square minus 4AC over 2A. But since we have determinant equal to zero, I can uh, I can like conclude that R1 is equal to R2, which is minus one. If the case is D greater than zero and does not equal to, to, to zero, it will be different and distinct root. And this is the way I can calculate the roots, R1 and R2. If D, which is the determinant is less than zero, the first thing I need to make is the real part minus B over 2A and the imaginary part is B square, radical B square minus 4AC over 2A. I calculate them and I will put them into this formula. The first root is real part plus J into imaginary part or times imaginary part and the R2 would be real part minus uh, the imaginary part times the imaginary part okay this is how we use the algorithm like these are the example of algorithms now algorithms in our daily lives we have like for example sorting papers this type of task is similar to function of a sorting algorithm like if bucket sort if you are a teacher and you have students in the class and they the class and, and these students have written the, their, their names on the, the upper top of the paper. And I asked you to sort these papers by looking at only the first letter of the first name, you can remove a lot of unnecessary information. For example, if I, if you are sorting the, the papers, uh, from A to Z in alphabetical order. And I asked you to find the name of your student, John. You are not going to search all these, uh, these uh, names. If any name starts with A, you will drop it with B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you will drop it. When you go and when you reach the letter J, you will start searching. So this algorithm that uh, uh, dropping the unnecessary information and unnecessary papers is helping you to find the best way to, ex to execute the searching and finding the corresponding student and the correct student in a specific and in a well-defined manner, in a perf perfect way, in an optimized way, okay? So, 
Another example in our lives, like uh, finding uh, the greatest number here. So how to do that? Okay, so we start by making these are the numbers. We, we directly correspond with the greatest number of digits. If I ask you to find the biggest number here, also, since they are having two digits, I look with the, uh, the number with the highest left digit, which is nine, and it is nine, nine, okay? Where are, do you have like algorithms in our life? How, what are the example like in the, like uh, reserving the seat in the uh, airplane? So you will find uh, the, the computer will find for you the best place to reserve your seat. Also in Google, everything will based on algorithms. Also, when if you open your maps, if you are going from one station to another station or from play one place to another place, you have multiple routes. These routes are calculated and the street uh, uh, and the path is find it in the shortest time according to algorithms. But the thing that I should mention for you that all of these algorithms, you are going to learn them in this course. So you are going to be a professional and you, cr you are going to crack the coding interview and become a professional interview uh, you book a professional employee professional coder professional data structure and algorithm to learn so next video we are going to talk about the data structure and start talking about how to create and how to implement your own data structures it, please if you find this video uh, helpful and you benefit from this video please Help us by like, comment, and subscribe. So I need from you to make a favor for us by supporting us to make continue publishing like this course and other tutorials.